Hello and welcome to another PvP replay. Um, today I've got a match between me and um, Elsa from Frozen. Uh, as his name states, he's starting with Frosty One. Um, well, I'm starting with Nature. So Nature vs. Frost, quite an unusual matchup. I, I think we, we rarely get to see uh, these, these games with uh, with the high, uh, as we have the the high participation of shadow and fire in tier one in PvP right now, so this time we've got uh, a somewhat rare tier one matchup. So first, well, on both sides. So the idea is here to lower the the void level a little bit, and um, also Haladu is quite large, so Frost cannot really respond to that. So I took the first power well, responded by power well. And since you started with Master Archers, I see that there is no Frost Mage spam being planned, at least for now. And this is why I'm trying to engage. And he's taking a power well. So I'm trying to rush this immediately with a Dryad. Um, but right here I messed up by um, not activating the Swift Claw. And also I really did mess up this positioning here. The Dryad got picked off early on. And I... Uh, get pushed back so this is a quite a quite a big loss I lost the the 60 power unit for 25 po uh, for the 20 power um, frostbite so next frostbite onto the shaman but this one is able to retreat for now because uh, there's another dryad coming here uh, lightblade trying to reduce the healing by taunting the shaman but this one is safe so we can kite back a little bit so the lightblade over here dies um, and the dryad here is trying to apply some CC and uh, also switching targets here while trying to get more shamans into the mix and allow this was uh, going to allow me to sustain through the dps that the frost units to have so i started here as a counter being played and he's trying to pick off the dryad because this is the only target that does not have the dry buff here as you can see the shamans take 25 percent reduced damage but since i'm cutting back he's switching on the swift club onto the swift club which is uh, not in the dried range so also not getting this damage reduction buff so, uh, focus fire is all right here. In the meantime, the stride is still trying to sleep and switch modes in order to apply some CC and uh, deal some damage here. So the swift claw is getting low. So the shamans are switching again to heal a little bit after the damage rotation, as you can see, and the dryad under focus again. So yeah, this is where um, where things get interesting because I. Am on a timer, as you can see. This well already gave him 20, uh, 50, 50 power, oh, and this ice guardian survived with two HP. This is a little bit unfortunate for me. Not sure if I did a mistake here and lost any DPS. But maybe I thought it was dead already. Didn't catch catch that here. Uh, so another frostbite here into the dryad, and yeah, that is not optimal because, as you can see, there's some some micro mistakes by me here. Uh, this definitely should not happen, and also good response by by frost biting the uh, the targets over here to to get these picks off, which is very important because uh, in an extended fight, nature definitely wins over here. Also, this shaman here dying, so I'm uh, I'm not playing playing super well in this in this T1. So right now we're kiting a little bit, healing this shaman back up, and also draw doing this drawback thing. So there is the respawn. Are a little far, a little farther away from my from my main unit, so I can fight on this open ground. As you can see, I have like uh, seven, eight units right now, which is a lot against the three. But this power well almost paid off. Um, to be fair, it didn't, it didn't pay off by now because my enemy also invested a lot more energy. So I also have a little advantage through that because uh, you only get 90% back into the void from the from the stuff that you can kill over here. So every unit that dies is also granting me a 5 power advantage if we talk about permanent things. So even though this already gave him 100 power, um, I still not... Uh, this, this well still didn't pay off technically because he lost so many units during during the defense. Um, as you can see, like, shame and kiting here. Um, to, to make sure the Ice Guardians don't get any unit kills while the Swift Claw is still applying a lot of damage. Um, yeah. So the unit mass is getting bigger and bigger, but also the void pool here pretty high, as you can see, with 480. Uh, I have 70 void, so there's the, the a clear difference in, in power income. 
right now, but I have the, the large army on the board. So I'm trying to destroy the Ice Barrier in order to reduce the shields from the uh, Ice Guardians. Another Ice Barrier coming here, but as you can see, since the shields is getting reduced, this was clearly worth it, even though I just got a 20 power building. Um, Frostbite and Kiting here by the by the Dryad, refreshing the Shamans again by the uh, by the F key in order to, to heal up the Dryad here. And refocus onto the Master Arches that are slightly too far forward, because the reinforcements are not here, and with the low DPS here you won't be able to get uh, get any picks. So I'm playing a second Dryad, because my opponent is clearly focusing uh, my my Dryads here, as they are the squishy targets. Uh, so I'm, I'm really trying to prevent that. I don't want to lose any additional units here, because uh, this well already gave 150 power, which is quite a lot. Despite the 800 uh, score difference, which pretty much indicates that there is a clear power loss. So it's it's if I kick this power well, I still am in a good position. You can see there's 2,000 score by the enemy, 1,100 power spent by me. So a lot, a lot of power that uh, that got lost during during the fight here. So right now I decide to go for well focus because my opponent played units. And as you can see, the power for the glacier shell was. Yeah, he got it pretty late, so it was very risky to uh, to attempt glaciering this with like 200 HP or something. Uh, he played two Ice Guardians that sort of took him the power um, to defend this properly. So right here, my opponent goes to two, um, which is the the right choice because you cannot stop this with uh, with the unit deficit that you have here. And yeah, Elder from Frozen going for Stonekin. Which is uh, good for him because Stone Tempest is very strong against the against the large amount of air units. So he's playing the Master Archers over here, threatening uh, attack by Barovos or something. So I was a little bit unsure if I can rush this. So I ended up picking up Tissue by myself because if I don't get to do this over here, I really need, would have been able uh, not been able to respond to this here. Uh, nature units are quite expensive expensive. I, I had to invest a Dryad over here to block this. Especially if he, like, once he defends, he might be able to to get uh, a Barova or something and kick this power. That would be really bad for me. So I end up deciding going to tier 2 and I also play Stonekin. Uh, so double Stone Tempest over here, uh, which is up against like 9 shamans or what is it? 9 shamans and 2 Dryads, so a pretty large nature army. Using the M damage to burst down the Storm Singer here, but the Storm Tempest with the M damage and the M knockback, quite, quite good against the Shamans. Uh, my unit split here is not optimal, to be fair. I really would need some Shamans here, some Shamans here. As you can see, the Cold Snap hitting a lot of units, but with such a high amount of units, it gets quite hard to split everything properly, especially once you have units that are outside of the Shaman heal range, it, it gets a little difficult. So I thought I could sustain through this with uh, Crystal Fiend. Um, he's trying to burst this down with Storm Singer Frostbite. As you can see the, the damage is pretty huge so I'm really trying to keep the Crystal Feet alive with my with my Shamans. So a nice attempt but not that successful. On the other hand the Home Soil very very useful to get the extra damage that is necessary to kill the Shamans and once some of these Shamans die uh, things get a little bit more difficult. So I'm aware that I cannot push this anymore because my Dryads are dead and I also lost some Shamans already. Just seven Shamans left. So I'm trying to focus a little more on, on trading with the with the Spirit Hunters here and getting new units. And this, in the meantime, the Stone Tempest is trying to keep my Crystal Fiend CC'd in order to reduce the overall healing. And um, yeah, as I have these seven Shamans on the board, I have a small problem because these seven shamans are binding 490 power and my opponent has the void completely accessible for his tier 2 unit so there's also crystal fiend coming getting gravity searched uh, I actually do have that spell in my deck but since I don't have a lot of single target damage I'm not able to finish any units so in the end this is not that not that effective for me I get to pick off a storm singer over here but I sort of realized that I will be uh, that I won't be able to um, to push this. So I try to retreat and get to safety here. Um, 
Yeah, this time the Storm Stinger ability getting my Crystal Fiend, so this is quite a big loss because I still do have five Shamans that are binding 350 power against Storm Singer, Spirit Hunters, and uh, Stone Tempest, which is definitely not optimal. <laughs> so my opponent picks up another power well, which is um, which is correct. I think he can he definitely can do this and. This is establishing control to the center. He's he's, um, he's clearly in the in the better position, and if I respond with a power well, he might be able to attack. But for now, this doesn't happen. I'm trying to split with a Barovay over here, so there is a lot more room for me to to intercept this attack here. He cannot focus fully onto the attack if there's a Barovay running around. Um, threatening a uh, split attack if he c completely commits on, on attacking here, so he stops. Uh, I think you still would try to push this and um, yeah, try try to sort of intercept the, the Barovar attempt here, but the idea here is tier 3. So I think this tier 3 is a little bit too early, so I'm trying to push with my, with my Barovars over here. Uh, but a very nice route here. Keeping keeping him in place for now. So it's it's frost, so it's timeless ones. So clearly if he solidifies his position with timeless ones um, and doesn't lose too many weights, he clearly has the uh, the, the chance of of, uh, of finishing this game. Um, because this timeless one tier three is very strong, and I also don't play tier three in my deck. Uh, but there is the push on this side. In the meantime, I'm trying to attack with Barovas here. In the meantime, the spirit hunters are killing the storm singer. That got rid of my Barova. Uh, Stone Tempest trying to focus my Crystal Fiend um, and the freeze by the by the Timeless One. In the meantime, another Timeless One freezing these two Barovas and the Barovas spam is starting because I'm trying to use the extra 250 power that I do have in my uh, in my uh, my Void. I think I also before the engagement I killed two Shamans over here just for uh, f for the information. Um, because I wanted to have more Void for the Barova attack and I don't think Shamans against tier 3 is a really solid idea. So I think I messed up my split here. The Barovas should attack this power well over here. Uh, another Barova attack going in here. So I'm pretty much saying, hey, I'm sacrificing this well in order to maybe get 2 or 3 with the with the Barova attempt because there's a lot of bound power here and 250 bound power in, uh, in the tier 3. So I'm really trying to, to push... Uh, push this this down so uh, since I lost the borrowers on one side I'm really trying to get pressure on to everything it's very important against frost splashes so this one dropped here to uh, apply pressure onto multiple wells at once if I have like uh, six borrowers at this power well he can easily defend with uh, with the uh, shield building as you can see it's completely negating the damage I should if, if, if there's a shield building, you might really want to switch onto the orb. But you, see, you can see I'm trying to overload the protectees on low power. So here's a shield building, cobalt trick, freeze over here. In the meantime, the borrowers here are switching their position. And the timeless one tries to, to kill them. Heal coming in to keep them alive and to keep up the tempo here. And yeah, on this side, this, this power value drops. So a lot of pressure going on. Another freeze by the timeless one. So this army actually retreated. Uh, so he didn't push. That is something I did not expect. I actually kept the crystal fiend here in order to to uh, to keep it, to keep up the pressure. But yeah, in the in the end, um, as you can see, the shield building coming in. Um, so I'm trying to switch the target onto onto the the orb, and shield building onto the orb. In the meantime, these borrowers are applying the pressure, and I uh, got him down to to one single power well. Um, I'm coming into the main unit, so I still have three three Barovas here in place, and another timeless one trying trying to defend to defend the position. So it's three powers against one with with your threes still is not completely over, but it's looking quite quite bad here for for Elsa from Frozen. So I'm seeing the Stone Tempest and healing again to really make sure that we can pressure two buildings at once here and in the, this situation as you can see the, the power will drop because the energy for protects is simply gone um, with with a lot of lot of power in bound in defense with the three orbs 
and zero power walls, I am in a very very good position right now to simply keep my keep my position here. I I, I should have killed the crystal fiend by the way, because it, it was binding a lot of power and kept me uh, kept me down in, in the attack. So we can see silver wind lances being played right now to support uh, to support the. The army, I probably expect I expected something like Silver and Lance's Timeless One and probably the, the Stonekin Warrior, uh, which is quite good for me because Sparrow Spam is extremely strong against that because these these units don't uh, do very strong split attacks like Giant Slayer or something, so you can really f try to focus uh, with your entire power pool to to get to get this. The, this done. So we can see two Barovas on the side here trying to get intercepted by Stormsingers and uh, Silver and Lancers and Stone Tempest moving up to try to get for a last counter push here. Uh, that somewhat needs to succeed because my uh, my power well lead is uh, three power wells here and my void pool is getting bigger and bigger. So these Barovas are getting away due to their uh, ensnaring roots. Um, I always want to apply pressure onto the orb in order to force up protects and to lower the uh, available amount of power for the attack. So Storm Singer spam getting uh, here, getting into play here. Um, M counter perfect against the Silverbird Lancers. And yeah, in the meantime, an answering route's being played to get get rid of the Borrowers. And Storm Tip is root a little late, but uh, yeah, it's it's quite hard to keep keep everything in place. Uh, double double freeze by the timeless ones here, trying to catch as many targets as possible. But still, one of the storm singers uh, and the stone shards are able to uh, able to survive that. Um, yeah, and the crystal fiend always uh, getting make sure that we get the heals here. Double borrowers over here, double borrowers over here, pressuring down the orb. So it's it's pretty hard to maintain the base while while keeping this attack here alive with uh, with the high amount of power difference here so the orb getting low by now and yeah that's that's defended so that, that is a very good position for me in the meantime the storm stingers over here are getting rid of the barova both orbs pretty low so i still try to apply at least some pressure and another shield building coming in just in time here to keep it alive uh, this orb at 500 hp and uh, yeah it gets defended pretty nice so i'm not sure how much power he has yes 90 90 power so, so it could technically refresh the shield again okay he's using the cobalt trick um, but the army from the defense is coming in to get the orb at the top. Another timeless one trying to buy more time because counter units come uh, from the T1 base over here. So mountaineer being played to help up the siege. So I'm I'm seeing the timeless one here moving the mountaineer downwards because I know he wants to get the mountaineer and the crystal feed into the radius, which means I can dodge the timeless one freeze by um, moving downwards here, as he was not centering it on the mountaineer so mountaineer trying to really get this orb down because the borrowers are applying pressure and in the end he, both both orbs end up dropping so you can uh, you can see that right now there is just one orb left in the end and with with all these units around there is a lot of uh, a lot of room for me to to go forward and end this game. So in the end, uh, quite interesting Stonekin Mirror um, with different T1 starters. So that, that was pretty much the Frost T1 starter Stonekin against Nature T1 starter Stonekin. Um, and yeah, I think still, despite having like 150, 160 power gathered with the power, the, the T1 I think it, it was a small lead for me, but in the end, due to the counter push with the entity 2 base, there was, still was uh, an equal and winnable position, and I think the early tier 3 is the deciding factor in this game, um, because that allowed me to do this bar of a spam and uh, sort of win the game of that. So, yeah, interesting, interesting deck between two quite similar decks, and uh, yeah. Thanks, thanks for watching and see you in the next game.